All right, so today what we're going to do is we're just going to review this uh, case. And we have an edentulous area on the 1213 site with some um, super eruption. So we're only able to slip in one implant here. And so the first step, if you're going to do a guide, whether it's pilot or fully guided on the Remexis software, is just go ahead and take your intraoral impression. Um, and this is the plan scan here. The emerald is coming out in August and it's going to be um, like a jillion times faster at scanning. Um, it's really, really going to be um, a game changer. But in the meantime, we're using the, the, the plan scan. And so we're scanning this um, sextant in, making sure to get um, pretty much the whole, the whole quadrant or sextant. And we are going to do um, merging with the CBCT. So, but before you do that, you're going to then just design the restoration, the wax up, um, right on the ridge on the edentulous area. And you want to take some time to get um, the margins correct and get the emergence pro profile just the way that you want it, so that it's going to be a more accurate representation of where the final restoration is going to be. And I even get the occlusion dialed in. Um, the way that I want it and proximal contacts and everything so that when this does transfer over to the CBCT it's going to be actually useful versus just some random tooth plopped in there um, which is not really actually helpful at all <clears throat> and so here I am I'm just kind of tinkering with this getting the occlusion and now we're going to go over to the CBCT and you can see all the 3D volumes are right there uh, the wax ups there and everything that I just designed the first step that I like to do is just highlight the adjacent root of the tooth right next to the edentulous space so that this way it just pops and stands out when I'm virtually placing that implant. And it's really easy to do this. You just kind of click the, the little tooth icon and then start to color in the root. And it actually has an automatic feature where it def tries to find hard lines in the DICOM data. And it's really easy. You could right click to erase and left click to add material and it's just going to actually create a 3D model of that root and bring that back into the virtual model and so now I'm redrawing the panoramic curve and I'm slicing over there and I'm going to go ahead and add a little Zimmer um, implant in here and for this um, although you can do fully guided I'm just going to do a pilot guide for today so I'm going to slide this Zimmer implant in here and start placing it kind of where I think that it belongs without having the knowledge of the CEJ, of the wax up, the soft tissue, um, or the tooth location. So I'm kind of just plopping it in there. And you can see the safe zone around the implant has been defined and I have the root highlighted in pink so that I'm able to clearly define that with a little bit of wiggle room there. And the, tool, the tools are, are just super intuitive it's really easy to to do this and now now i'm going to bring in the scan that i did the intraoral scan of the edentulous area and the adjacent tooth and i'm going to plop this in and it's all right there and you select it and now you have to pick common data points to merge these two 3d data sets together it's really easy you want to pick three distinct points that are separated by a good bit of distance and so here's what i mean by that i'm going to tap on this canine here first and, and I'm going to pick the analogous point I'm going to pick the uh, same point on the CBCT so here we go and I'm spreading these marks out kind of as far as I can so I'm going all the way now over to the other uh, contralateral canine here and this usually results in a better alignment and a better initial best fit. The software does do automatic tweaking of that. Um, and so now we could see they're merged down. And you could check it. So what you want to do to check it is you go into your views and you're going to slice this. And look, at it's just a perfect alignment there of those two models. And now I'm going to bring in the restoration. And it automatically plops it in wherever you had designed it, which is really cool. And I can see I don't really love that placement. So now I'm going to just go back to my implant centric view and I'm going to tweak tweak that placement a little bit to have it because I'm going to do a screw retained restoration here. And so I want that screw access hole to be more centralized if I can. <clears throat> and I'm paralleling the root of the cuspid. And it's um, 
just just checking, triple checking to make sure that I like that emergence. And so I'm going to cross section it in the 3D view. And I think I'm liking the way that this is placed right now and the way that it's coming out of the soft tissue. And so um, the only thing that I left to do is just to tweak my, my depth and my location from the CEJ. So I want it to be about three deep and about two over. So about two, mil two to three millimeters palatal and about three millimeters apical to the CEJ. And so now I'm ready to go ahead and fabricate the guide. And to do this, you click on the guide module within Romexis and you set your path of insertion. And you go ahead and just circumscribe the area you want the guide to be made. And it's going to automatically um, render that. And you can set the parameters for the tube length. In this instance, I know my pilot drill is 29 millimeters long. My implant is 10, and so from that, I could have a, a pilot guide that I could bottom out my handpiece and not have to worry about depth just by doing some simple mathematics. So I need a 14 millimeter long tube there. Um, and I have a four millimeter tube to implant base start point so that I have all that worked out to where, and now I'm just adding some little holes so that I can make sure it's seated. You could add text to the guide it's probably the easiest and simplest software to use in the world. Now I'm exporting that STL so I could 3D print that. Now it brings it back into the to the model and I um, now could make measurements to further verify that the depth is going to be correct. So I'm measuring now here and making sure that I'm at that about 28 and a half to 29 with my depth and that you know just making some final verified measurements that the STL file is indeed accurate. And I'm going to print this up out of any printer. In this particular instance, I'm using the Formlabs Dental SG resin, which is a, a guide resin that you could autoclave. And here we go. Um, this is just the pilot. And um, we're going to Dr. Evans is the periodontist that is using this for his patient. And he's um, probably one of the most talented surgeons that I know, and he, in this instance, just wants a pilot guide. So he's gonna sink this down to the appropriate depth. That diameter of that pilot tube is um, 2.1 millimeters diameter, with a pilot drill is 1.8, so there's very little wiggle room, very little room for error. And you can see now we're gonna put in the, this uh, pilot burr, and we're gonna take a, x-ray to make sure that everything's perfect and then it is perfect and then there's the final placement of the implant which was about three seconds later after one or two more initial um, osteotomies were created. Uh, so that's uh, pretty much in a nutshell the guided software and we'll do one with a fully guided here and and we'll go ahead and video that out for you too and maybe slow it down and even go into some more detail with that.